Shake it off. All right. Hi, my name is Zach. I'm Jake. I'm Taylor. And we're here to talk to you today about the prisoner's dilemma, game theory, and how it applies to the business world. Let's get started. All right, so the prisoner's dilemma is a game theory example where two prisoners must separately decide whether or not to confess to a crime. So if you look at the, the chart here, if prisoner A and prisoner B both do not confess, that'd be the ideal situation. They would only have two years each. If prisoner A does confess and prisoner B confesses, then they both have five. But if A doesn't confess, but and B does confess, then B only has one year and A would have 10 years. And vice versa for the other way around if A confessed and B did not confess. So ideally you would want the each one would want two years, but you don't know what the other one's gonna do. So for you an aggressive like stance would be to um, to confess, because the worst you're gonna get if you confess is five years. And that is the idea of the prisoners. The oligopolies often find themselves in the prisoner's dilemma because they must decide whether to compete aggressively or to cooperate with their competitors. Oligopolies inherently have an incentive to compete aggressively so that they can capture more of their competitors' market share. However, it is also in their best interest at times to cooperate so that they can all set high prices and work together to, uh, in a way, collude. While each firm has that incentive to undercut, they almost always will because they also have to worry about their competitors undercutting and they can't find themselves in an unfavorable situation. It's very rare for firms to be able to come together and find a solution. However, they sometimes can. An example of firms working together in the same industry are Pepsi and Coke. Pepsi and Coke keep their prices relatively similar because they're competing for the same market and they wouldn't want to undercut each other due to the fact that this would, could create a price war as they would each have to lower their prices to compete with the other. This is an example of firms in an industry um, working at least cooperatively together so that they can both sustain higher profits in the long term. So we're gonna give you an example of local bars here in the Boise area that have their own prisoner's dilemma going on. We have Suds, Crickets, and Endzone. Here they are. Here we have local owner of Suds Bar, Zach Hansen. He's here to talk to us today about them bringing dollar beers back on Thursday nights. So we used to do dollar beer night and we had a lot of people come in on Thursday nights and we, we got a lot of revenue from that. But we thought that if we got rid of it, we'd still have those same people come in and we'd make more money by charging the normal prices for beer. However, this we, it took us a little while to realize it wasn't working out. And so we recently brought it back and now we have dollar beer night on every Thursday and our revenue has increased by a lot. So it's working good for us. Here we have Taylor Turpin, local owner of Endzone Bar directly across from Suds. I've been managing the bar for like 15 years now and we've noticed low, low foot traffic Thursday nights at our uh, end zone, man. Let me tell you, since uh, Suds is only a few yards away, it's been, our target market has just been crashing down. But tailgate season, meet us there, we'll be there. Here we have local bar owner of Crickets. Hello, I'm Jake, I own the local bar Crickets. Our market, um, our target market competes people that are going to Suds for dollar beers on Thursday night since they since they brought that back. Some things we've been looking at to compete with Suds new move are uh, lowering some of our prices down on Thursday nights and bringing in new events such as karaoke night because we're going to have to steal back some of that market share. Within this book, I've hidden the key to increasing profits. Me and the local bar owners have decided to go to a duel over it. Ah. 
example of game theory illustrated in our remake of Good, Bad, and the Ugly as our bar duel is the perfect example of game theory because it shows when one firm has more information than another or has a better advantage or an unfair advantage, they can win a duel like we saw Zach win here as he took down Taylor and I had had the ammo removed from my water bottle.